Hi everyone, happy end of July. Um, and one of my monthly garden video updates, what's going on in the Portrait Carry, I thought I would enter into the garden from another direction today. Um, and just give um, a different perspective on things. We have lots of flowers blooming, um, lots of lilies and other things, and right at that point where I'm gonna be harvesting things again, um, but things are kind of at their peak now, maybe now through the next month or so. Things have been really hot and dry and smoky. Um, we are, uh, the humidity has been really high, which is strange for us, into the 30s, 30%, uh, 40% range, which is a lot. We do have some storms coming in too, so that's great. We'll get some rain and cool down in the weather. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and we'll start looking around. Shoo! And we're gonna go into the back gate here from the north side of the house. And we'll see if my my swimming pool is under construction. I need a pump that fits it. And things are going well along over here. Sunflowers, more cleaning up behind Nancy's barn. And things are establishing here. We have the cosmos came out and the pineapple weed. I've been And my calendula. I've been harvesting the calendula, keeping the red aphids at bay. Um, and it's a slow collection, but as um, the summer goes on, I'll let some of the blossoms go to seed, and this reseeds really easily. So I'd like to. I planted this nasturtium here, and it doesn't smell very good. I might take it out um, and let just, I'll let the calendula keep going along here some more, but um, it'll just keep reseeding itself. Um, so that's really exciting and I love the deep orange color. They're beautiful, but you have to pick them. I find I have to pick them very quickly because the worms will get into the blossoms and the aphids come in. Um, the insects really like it, so every day I come out here and I'll pick the <clears throat> blossoms that are at peak and just start an accumulation of that. I'm gonna spin around to garden beds. I've been having a lot of fun with my cut flowers. The snapdragons have been really fun and nice to have. I'm gonna let some of them go to seed and this carrot, a couple carrot plants in here from seasons past that I like. And I also add those into the bouquets with the um, marigolds. And my tarragon is revving up, I'm letting the tot soy and the mustard greens also go to seed. They've bolted. So just let them bolt. And my peas, all of a sudden, middle of summer. And I am finally have peas. <laughs> so, snort, sorry. Uh, yeah, so they're probably almost on their way out too, but we've been eating some really nice snap peas and my pepper, maybe. I don't know, not seeing a lot of blossoms. I'm really sad. My Meyer lemon tree didn't make any blossoms. I think that's I'm not sure it has to do with the bees coming too late or what, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get any lemons this year on my tree, which is really sad. I put a dill in here trying to take out some of this arugula. And then the strangest thing, I guess this is how it goes gardening, I had this gigantic zucchini that was making these monster zucchinis that were inedible, giant and woody. Um, but then it started taking, making smaller, more edible zucchini. 
And then one day I came home and it was totally dead. So it's just the main stem there, but it's actually giving my cucumber uh, more, oops, sorry, more room to grow. So I've been getting some nice cucumber off of that. Um, and then I harvested my garlic. I'll <clears throat> replant this bed later after the heat of the summer starts to die down. Um, I like to rotate the garlic around. Um, at some places need lots of sun, but the garlic's been pretty flexible. And my, this bed is going well. The board just slowed down. Everything just really bolted and got gigantic in the spring. We had a nice wet spring and still need to clean this bed. But the chamomile, I've been harvesting the Roman chamomile. Again, it's a slower process until these um, plants mature and get bigger. And my sage is still staying pretty small, but it looks really good. And the wormwood and the tomatoes. I finally have tomatoes. Two for seven. <laughs> um, so these little yellow cherry tomatoes. And then I forgot what this one was. This one stayed really small. So, but I'm, it's still giving me tomatoes. So, and then the narrow leaf plantain. Need to cut this down. It recedes really easily. I bought a broadleaf plantain, uh, plantago major, 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 um, and figuring out where to put it. That's the more traditional plant that's used. Um, and come around here. I need to weed whack. The yarrow over here is on its way out I should just trim this down and my red clover did pretty good I think it's gonna hang in there it's tucked tucked way in there behind all this other white clover on the ground um, and then my rosemary whorehound I need to cut this back um, here's my lemon tree that it's not going to make any lemons this year for the first time and this was an apartment tree for a few years and it always made lemons, so I'm sad. We'll see what happens. Oh, hi, Theo. What are you barking at? Hi. What's going on? He's busy. And this bed is filling in really nice. I've got the Zebrina Malva that's getting taller and the Mum. The Boju Hua, which is medicinal, uh, traditional Chinese, you put the whole chrysanthemum blossom in boiling water and make a tea. Uh, my logo for my herbal business, Late Bloomers, is the chrysanthemum. Uh, and then we have Skullcap, which is blossoming. I have Skullcap if you'd like to harvest. This also transplant really easily. Um, it's getting to the point now where I could offer up a digging or two, but i um, also ready to harvest. Just gotta dodge the grass. And then um, the nettles is coming back in really nice. I This was also one of the plants in the spring. It got really big and really huge really fast. The leaves were um, almost as big as my hand. Um, and I've cut it back a couple times and it's now finally starting to make smaller, more tender, um, leaves and shoots that are better for harvesting, in my opinion, to dry and eat as food. Um, and then all the lilies, all the different colors, and the echinacea. This is an ornamental echinacea, I think. I don't know. Penny planted this, the previous person that lived here, so I'm not sure if it's provenance, so don't use it as medicine. Um, the leaves of the lily are so delicious. And the edible, they're very sweet and juicy, full of water and a sweet, gentle, sweet flavor. Um, and really nice to add to salads. And then my wood betony, Stachys officinalis. I'm ready to harvest this. I love this 
herb very much. It's good for, um, it's a good nervous system. Oh, good for dreaming, sleeping, relaxing, um, easing the brain of the world's stresses, helps with sleep. Um, and then the goat cola, chugging along, everything's settling in well. Here's my Pontago Major, the broadleaf plantain. This is the plantain I was talking about, so I have to figure out where to put this. And my blackberry lilies are in, in bloom. There's a few right now. Bellum Canda Chinensis, blackberry lily. It's beautiful. And the way they twist. into these things. They come in and out of these little twists in their development during the day when they fade away and then they'll make these little seed pods after the flower goes away. Shaky on the zoom. There. Two little seed pods. Those will make the little black berries and it'll look, a cluster of them will kind of look like a blackberry, but they're definitely not a blackberry. That's where the name comes from. There's another one, just beautiful. The wind is blowing, the storm is coming in for the weekend, which is nice. Drop the temperature down from high 90s down to mid 70s, which will be very welcome. And there's the Menarda fistulosa, that's ready to harvest, and more lily, the oregano, tons of oregano, the bees like the oregano, I'll zoom in and see if we can see some bees. They're all over the bush, I can't really see it in my screen, but hopefully in the video, y'all can see them just buzzing around all over it. Um, <clears throat> and my Monarda. It's beautiful, beautiful, even when it's dried and there's a giant bumblebee. The bumblebees. Get the right one? There he is. Bumblebees love it. There's another one. Okay, bye-bye, Bumblebee. Zooming out. And some kind of daisy thing, Black-Eyed Susan. I don't know what that is. My Arnica has gone back. And more yarrow. This is still ready for some harvesting. Great for astringing. I got a really bad bruise on my leg, so I've been made a strong decoction of the yarrow aerial parts and cooled it down, made a cool compress for my leg, and it's taking down the bruising, uh, tightening this quality of the skin tissue, um, re helping the skin regain integrity. And the Johnny Jump Ups are still going. And then still the Monarda Citriodora hasn't started blooming yet, but this is the tallest it's ever gotten. Usually it gets really lanky and has a hard time standing up, but it's doing great this year. And still haven't cut back the Melissa. There's still a lot of things I need to have been busy, really busy. I'm almost finished with moving into my workspace. I'm um, getting a new door and a new window over there. So yeah, it's coming along really well, excited. And there's another toad living here. It's one of Millicent's kin. Millicent, I guess, is around in some one of the barns, but not coming around here. But there's a smaller one that's been coming and sunbathing and 
eating bugs and things from here. She's not here right now. Need a name for the new toad. Millicent Jr. Millicent II. We don't know. You tell me. Sunflowers. And this is my Echinacea angustifolia. So I want to, I learned from recently from my teacher, Lisa Ganora. She made a short little video on Facebook that it, these little flower buds as they're maturing into this are, have the highest medicinal quality to them. They have a higher concentration in the medicinal constituents. Echinamide. Pretty sure. Beautiful plant. Nice for cuttings too. It's nice to have this one, but it's also nice to have the ornamental one or the ones that I don't know if they're medicinal. It's easier for me to cut these for bouquets. And then I think that's about it. I'm gonna swirl around a little bit. I wanted to, oh, I wanted to maybe zoom in to the, there's another bee on the wood bed knee. <clears throat> but it gives me an opportunity to really zoom in on these flowers. Let's see what I'll do is so I'll sit down. This is in the mint family, Lamiaceae. You can see the mint family. Square stems, where's my hand? Can't even, where's my hand? Square stems, if you feel it, it feels like a square and opposite leaves. Wherever there's a leaf, there's another one opposite. It's one of the main characteristics, and there's many, many plants in the mint family. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around and say goodbye. Thanks for following along again as I wander around my yard <laughs> and ramble about my garden. Uh, I hope you all are having a great summer and um, enjoying the outdoors and living your best life. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.